guys so I am bringing you my Friday reads today um, I'm not actually drinking tea this morning uh, I'm drinking coffee because it's like seven o'clock in the morning so I haven't gotten around to drinking tea because I'm filming this before I go to work um, I'm actually at the moment working two jobs and volunteering and doing school so I'm like super busy um, just trying to like fit everything in so I am actually filming this on Thursday because I have to work tomorrow and I'm gonna film this this morning and edit it and then set it to upload while I go to work tomorrow. So yes, um, this is what I have read so far this week. Um, I did finish Moby Dick. I finished this, this took me five days to read. Um, I was gonna try and like slow myself down for the readathon and then I just really enjoyed it so much that I just, kept reading like 100, 150 pages a day and just flew through it. Um, it was a lot funnier than I expected it to be. Um, I will admit my friend warned me that the parts about the whale were boring and I have to agree with her but I'm really excited that my nautical knowledge came in useful um, because I'm a history student and because I kind of focus more on like violence and warfare. I do know the difference between a sloop and a galley and a Chinese junk and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that actually came in really useful when reading this and I emailed one of my profs who like really harped on the nautical knowledge and I'm like I actually got to use it so that was exciting. Um, I do really recommend this um, and as far as like because I've never actually read one of my drop caps before I mean I know I have like I think I have five of them um, but I'd already read Pride and Prejudice, so I didn't need to read my drop cap edition. It's actually really nice. Um, they they open up really well, like the, I don't know how to explain this, but on the cloth bounds they're a little stiff to open and these are not, but they stay like in their shape, if that makes sense. Yeah, they hold up really well to re being read. Um, I also finished The Tenant of Wildfell Hall, which it's by Anne Bronte and oh my god guys I love this so much like I I can't even uh yeah this was amazing um if you like Jane Austen read this if you are not a fan of Charlotte or Emily Bronte read this this is nothing like her sister's work um unfortunately she has only published two novels before her death when she was 29. Um, this one and Agnes Grey, which I really want to read Agnes Grey, but I'm hunting for a nice copy. Um, even like they don't even have a Penguin English Library copy, which is heartbreaking because I really, really, really want to read it, but I also just don't want to spend the money on a copy that's ugly. I know that's weird, but yeah, this was amazing. Um, basically, to those of you who don't know, it tells the story of Helen Graham and uh, now I'm forgetting his name. Yeah basically it deals with a lot of like what was going on during the romantic period. Um, the the main character Helen it's it's framed weirdly like it's framed with letters from I think his name's Frederick. I don't know why I am blanking on this but his, name, his last name's Markham. Anyways, uh, I, most of the story though tells about Helen and her husband, uh, Mr. Huntington, and like his, Mr. Huntington anyways, crazy lifestyle as like a romantic and Byronic kind of person who drinks too much and is generally like morally corrupt and how Helen deals with that and just, oh, so good. Definitely read this. Um, yeah, this has definitely already made its way into my top 10 books. I don't actually know what my top 10 books are, but I'm going to say this one's in it. So I also finished Northrop Fry's The Educated Imagination, which was a CBC Massey lecture. Um, to those of you who don't know, CBC is the Canadian Broadcasting Station. I don't know what the other C stands for. Um, but basically it's literary criticism and how to read properly. Um, as you can tell, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was published in the 60s, like it was originally done in the 60s, so there is a little bit of sexism in there. Um, 
At one point he mentions how an artist got revenge on his bitch of a wife by like painting one of her napkins so realistically she tried to reach into the painting to get it and he talked at one point about um let's say for an example we're dealing with a woman who's in you know a difficult mood and I was like oh oh right I have to remember that you you wrote this in the 60s and I have to keep that in mind when I'm reading, despite the fact that it's getting my feminist hackles up. But yes, very good. Um, a very good introduction to literary theory as well. Um, this is generally required reading for Canadian, at least my experience. Most of my friends had to read this for high school. Um, I didn't because I had really crappy teachers, so I just decided to get caught up and read this. Um, so yeah, I do recommend it. It is very Canadian centric as well. Like he mentions a lot of his examples use Toronto because that's he taught at the University of Toronto. So that is where his experience is. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, really enjoyed that. So after reading all that, because that was like well over a thousand pages, um, I kind of hit a little bit of a slump. Like not, I mean, to be fair, I finished the tenant of Wildfell Hall like two days ago. So this is like a slump for me. Um, and I've been trying to get into Frances Burney's Evelina as my like book that I'm reading when I'm out and about. I'm not very far. I'm only on letter 11, which is like page 30 in my Oxford edition. Um, maybe it's just cause like I'm a little burned out from reading Moby Dick and uh, Wildfell and both of those were so good that I'm just expecting this to grab me right away like those two did so I'm just having a little bit of trouble getting into this but I am gonna persevere and finish it it's not that long I'm just looking yeah it's only like 400 pages so it's like medium length so I will continue to try and read this um also just I've been so tired at work that I just haven't had the energy to read on my breaks uh, and last night I started on Frankenstein as my like bedtime read. Um, I might actually start carrying this with me because this isn't a super heavy cloth bound and it's not really that thick in comparison to some of the other ones that I have. Like I definitely wouldn't carry around Middlemarch because that's a little bit like a brick and this is a bit smaller. So I haven't read a lot. I got through the introduction, the, the letters from the captain to his sister. Um, and now I'm getting into the actual story of like Dr. Frankenstein. Um, so yeah, this, I really pushed myself to start this last night. I did not feel like reading. I just kind of was lying in bed and I was texting my friend, um, Jen from her Tumblr is Adventures on Paper, I think. I'm pretty sure. Um, and we were texting and I'm like, I don't, like, I want to read, but I feel like I have book hangover. So it's kind of hard for me to get through it. But yeah, I'm going to persevere and get through this. I know it's just, you know, I'm still still kind of a little bit on the Pequog and a little bit, you know, hanging out with Helen at Wildfell. So yeah, that's just, uh, it's, it's a little, it's hard when you go from books that you just love so much and try and start something new. And you're like, I still want to read. I still want to like keep up my momentum of reading a lot but nothing is appealing to me right now and it's it's frustrating but oh well so that is what i read this week so far um next week i i'm not quite sure what i'm going to film for my monday video i haven't decided yet i have a couple different options i might do an unread book shame post yeah i'm i'm trying to dissuade myself from buying books and I, I'm like, yeah, I need to, like, after my haul, I'm like, I really need to step it back on buying so many books. Because I bought so many last month. And I realized I actually forgot a couple to include in that haul, which makes it even worse. And I don't want to talk about that. But I've already ordered five books this month, which isn't that bad, to be fair. Um, I did place an Amazon order for The Clothbound Emma and Sense and Sensibility. And I bought a couple books that had been out of stock on Book Depository and came back into stock. So that doesn't count. It doesn't count at all. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Um, but yeah, I, I have sitting and it's still up on my computer screen. And if I like strain my head, I can see my computer screen with my like 
chapters um, cart and I'm like, oh, I just want to buy all the things, but I'm trying not to buy all the things. So I might shame myself by showing off all my unread books and hold myself accountable for not buying anymore. Um, but yeah, so that is what I read on Friday. Let me know if you guys have had any trouble with like book hangover and not like finding anything after you've read an amazing book and you still want to read but nothing's appealing to you. Um, and let me know what you guys have read this week in the comments below and I will see you guys on Monday. Bye!